Uh, Kobe, in a nice uh, win with the white pieces against the talented Indian Debushis Das, how did the game go? Uh, well, I was uh, trying to prepare something, but he plays so many different lines, so I figured uh, I'll just play something and just I play this move, bishop f4, move 4 against b6. I, you know, He doesn't play the too many uh, times with b6 moves, so I just play bishop f4, just get some position. And I think he just played uh, this bishop before check, which I'm not sure if it's the best, mm -hmm. and uh, later on the bishop got stuck. And uh, he should have uh, taken on d2 at some point, and he would have a probably slightly worse position, but you know, playable, it's very solid. And I think at the moment where I took on d5, knight d5, bishop d6, rook e8, and I think knight c4, and it's uh, very complicated. You know, I thought I'm doing great, and uh, okay, maybe he has some good defense, but he spent a lot of time there. He spent like almost 30 minutes, but he couldn't find anything better than what he went for. The piece sacrificed, but looks like I just defend everything and, uh, you know, convert up a piece, so. Right, now the piece sacrifice was definitely interesting, but when you went a3, black had this interesting resource of rook c8, b5. Is that something that you saw on the board? How did you feel about it? To be honest, there were so many things he could have done in that position. I had to calculate the bishop takes d6, knight d6, knight c5, for example, knight e5. There was also some other moves like knight c5 immediately without even taking on d6. So I saw the idea with rook c8. I figured I will just take the bishop. If he plays b5, knight takes d4. BC, I thought uh, maybe I'm still slightly better thanks to the pair of the bishops, but it uh, looks like it's probably just a, a dynamic equality there. So he missed the rook c8 move after uh, a3, you know, which was difficult to find, I think. Right, now, as a grandmaster in such a situation where, you know, you have to calculate so many interesting variations and so many possibilities, how do you come to the point where you know you have to decide and you have to make the move and what variation to go to? Give us some insights on how the mind works. Well, today in particular, I didn't want to get into, you know, time travel, because position was so complicated, I didn't know which way he's going to go. So I just played the move I was thinking to play, and I say, whatever he decides on, I'll just, I calculate to see my position is safe, so I just give him the option to choose. He had like four different options. Rook c8 was the best one, by which he didn't find. If he had found rook c8, you know, I just try to play practical, because if you just uh, try to find the best move every time, you're going to be in time travel. I already spent 20 minutes on one move today, and I was not really happy about that, so I just after that I just started to play intuitively, just play quick moves and build up some nice time advantage for later later on, which I needed it. Right now, uh, with the last few games to go, you're doing pretty well. How, what is the strategy in this? Uh, you know, these last three rounds to go. Well, it's three more rounds to go, and uh, you know, I think uh, you know I'll probably be half a point behind the leaders yes. at the moment. So you know, I hope to play well. I came uh, here to you know, get some practice before my big tournament, US Championship in March. So that's why I'm here. I'm just here to play and just not to worry about the results right now. Is the US Chess Champ something that's the most important tournament for you in the year? Oh, absolutely. It's just by far the most important tournament. It's like an elite event which I get to play. I, I don't play any other elite events like this. So it's a you know, very strong tournament. And I hope to play some very strong players because that's the people I'm going to play in US Championship. So people comparable if I can get them you know that'll be good you know to get some practice because otherwise I only play once a year against this 20 2800 players so it's very difficult right now Kobe, a lot of top players say that in fact playing in tournaments is a great way to improve your games and to improve your chess in general and actually practical play is underrated do you also advise young players upcoming players to play as many tournaments as possible uh, if you're young, yes, you can play probably as many tournaments, probably even once a month or twice a month. For me in particular, I didn't see any good tournaments in a calendar, so and I wanted to get something similar, similar time control to the US Championship, like this tournament, and very strong players that maybe I get to play a few of them, and uh, also one game a day, which is rare in US. US, we have a lot of tournaments, but two games a day, and the quality of the opponents is not as strong. So that's why I really you know, wanted to play here as my last tournament leading up to the championship and then I analyze the games to see how I perform and uh, go from there. Right, well you're at five and a half, a great start for the event. We wish you all the best for the last three rounds as well as for the US Chess Champs and hope to have you back here. Uh, thank you very much.